Welcome to our video serial from job advertisement to a targeted CV and job application. Through three videos, we show you how you can transform a job advertisement into targeted application material. And it's easy to say that you should target your material, but through these videos, we show you a concrete example on how you can do that. It's our hope that after having seen these three videos, you will be able and prepared to do the same with a job advertisement that you have found. This is part two, the second video on the targeted CV. In part one, we looked on how to read and decode a job advertisement. And in this video, we will focus on how you can transform this knowledge from video one into a concrete and targeted CV. This also means that we will use examples from the job advertisement in video one. And if you haven't seen this, it is our strong recommendation that you pause this video and see video one before you continue with this one. We recommend this because it makes it easier to understand the examples that we are using when we go through a CV here, explaining on how you target it to a specific job advertisement. And before we look at the CV, the first important thing is to say that the CV looks back. It is fact-based, it's looked upon the past, what did you do, what's relevant to mention, and it summarizes your experience and your education so far, things that are relevant to the job. The job application is looking forward into the future, but the CV is, as I said, looking back. Let's look at this example of a CV. It's based on a real student from Aalborg University. Um, and as you see, it's Vilma Hassan, it's a two page CV. The structure is of course also important when you make a CV. As you see, this CV is quite easy to overview. It's easy for the eye to get an overview and understand the most important things when you skim through it. However, in this video, we will look more into the content that we will talk about the structure. And we will talk about how you can target the information you found in the job advertisement into the CV. So at your right hand side, you see the important themes that we identified in video one from the job advertisement. That it's about being passionate about electronics engineering, designing, testing, implementing, development of electronics, on a module and system level, as well as software for embedded electronics and user interfaces. Completing tasks accurately and correct, self-motivated and work in a fast-paced environment, team player and adaptable, responsible and independent. So that's what we should strive to target these things in the CV. And ways to do this is as you see some red highlights here in the CV now, there's a headline called Engineering Intelligent Reliable Systems with Passion for Water and Electri Electrical Systems. Use the headline to, to focus on what's important here. He uses the word passion for water and electrical systems. He says already here he's an engineer. So he focuses on the wording in the job advertisement and he kind of answers it here, shows his relevance. Then. Among other things, he said, international mind and control and robotics engineer. Right on, he shows he has the profile. Reliability engineering and in optimal control, he says further down. And then underwater robotics control engineering and fault uh, tolerant control. He already starts to you know, it's a sum up of his experience and the relevance, his competences for the job. Uh, he also says, as a co-worker, I'm driven, independent and thrive in a hectic work environment. These were things that were also highlighted in the job advertisement. As far as when we read it, we see that's very important. So that's a way that he, he sums up in the top of the first page. And we know for a fact that when employers look at CVs, which they, by the way, often look at before they look at a job application, um, to make sure that you're relevant before they read on, this first part of the first page is where they read most carefully and then they more skim the rest. So that's where you want to make sure that the information here is relevant, targeted to the reader. One step down, he has a paragraph with his IT skills. 
is an engineer position. It's a technical position. You also need to focus on, on software and some programming. So here it's important to show these IT skills up front and first hand in the CV. If it wasn't such a technical position, the IT wouldn't be that relevant and you could put it on the second page normally. But here he, again, he makes sure that it's relevant and put up here. Then he mentions his education, his master degree and his bachelor. He has a master degree in engineering, intelligent reliable systems from Aalborg University. And he just put a few lines saying, focus on development of intelligent control systems for robotics, reliability engineering and underwater research. Very to the point, you can present your program, your education in many different ways. But make sure that it's relevant. He could have written many other things, but these are the most relevant thing to know for the company. Then he writes something about his skills and his projects. He has written accuracy, responsibility and efficient. Some of the things that the accuracy and the uh, responsibility is quite important as well, we see in the job ad. He mentions a lot of projects that are relevant. You shouldn't mention all projects, but take out the ones that are relevant. And if the headline isn't relevant in itself, make a short description. Here you can see from the, from the titles that they are relevant. If we don't doubt to his experience, he has some experience as a project coordinator in research and development, Lifecraft Electronics at Viking. Um, he has made it in tasks and skills. You can divide your CV in many ways, but this is the way he has done it. A little description of tasks and then the skills he obtained. He could have mentioned many different tasks. He takes out the most relevant ones here. He writes supervision of Lifecraft Electronics. Development of new electronics, big part of the job, <laughs> EMC, um, E10 industry electronic approvals and project planning and deadlines. Showing also that he is very uh, familiar with the project work and the planning process and that's important as well. On the skills, he among other things writes big comp electronic projects. This was also part of the job advertisement. So he really just shows, he used some of the same wording because he has experience with this. He wants to show that. Uh, he also says that uh, he knows something about skills in industry standards and safety codes. This is an important part of this job as an electronics engineer. So he shows right away he has experience with this. And also making realistic project plans and keeping up to deadlines. Again, back to the project he just mentioned here. Looking further down, second page, he has experience as a research assistant at Aalborg University. He writes that he uh, worked with model comparison of a video ray pro for underwater and so forth. Very specific things he's worked with that are extremely relevant to the company he's applying to. So that's why he can just write that one sentence and he knows this is relevant for them. He found that through his research. He wrote a little bit on the task, but he in specifics here, the skills are relevant to look for us because he writes about self-motivation and passion, which is also part that they ask for in the job advertisement. He also put a job as a bartender on from uh, Denmark, from Esbjerg. Um, he writes that it was important for me as an international student to get a job in Denmark uh, and that he got to know about Danish working culture and to practice Danish. You can always discuss these non-study relevant jobs. How much should they be in your CV? Here he makes a translation and shows why did he take this job? Because he wanted to know more about the Danish working culture and he could practice his Danish. That's a very big signal to send being an international student. He also mentions an engineering student job he had in Iceland, uh, which was an engineering company with focus on automation solution for industry. Again, relevant information he writes something about the task and the skills so he all the time makes sure that information mentioned is the most relevant part he also put in his volunteer work which is by the way a big thing in denmark and looked upon as uh, <laughs> work that you got paid for as well so saying here he mentioned his young professionals network in denmark he was part of and I highlighted this sentence saying it has been important for me to make an extra effort because I always knew that I wanted to have a career in Denmark. So that's why he did this volunteer work. Again, being international and wanting to stay in Denmark, he's sending a signal by showing 
how much effort he put into this during his studies as well. He also shows some volunteer work he had in Reykjavik, being a first aid instructor, among other things. He, among, he mentioned some skills there, and he mentioned discipline, organization, and planning. Again, that's also some of the things that are mentioned um, in the job advertisement. He shows what did he gain from that, and you can imagine that from being a, a first aid instructor, <laughs> that you need this. Languages. A big thing, uh, especially being international and applying for a job in Denmark, make sure that you mention the languages that you speak, also your Danish level, if you have just a fair level still mention it. It's the signal you're sending that you have taken out time and resources to actually learn a quite hard language at the same time studying. It shows a signal that you're interested in staying here because it is, it is uh, expensive to recruit. So for an employer, it's important to see that if they if they invest in you, you won't just uh, <laughs> leave the country after six months. By showing these signals um, and that you've actually learned Danish, it's, it shows that you want to stay. Also remember, being international, you have several language skills probably. You have business insights and cultural insights that can be really important for a Danish employer. Uh, exporting to different markets, uh, collaborating with, with different countries. For example, if you're from Belgium, uh, both your French and your Dutch will be so much better than a Dane in almost any case. So you have other languages that you can use besides English and Danish if you have that. So remember that. Yes, that was a quick go through the, um, the CV, the targeted CV. Uh, and it, this is the end of video two. Next step is to look at the targeted job application in video three. We hope that you have gained a better understanding on how you can target uh, your material by just spending some time on doing research and looking into the job ad. I hope to see you in the next video as well.